Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back or welcome to my podcast, Rewired to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am thrilled to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 199. If you missed my last episode, number 198, we talked about at what point do you prioritize yourself? I hope your week is off to a fabulous start. I can't believe we are in the last week of January. I was looking at my calendar this morning, preparing for the week ahead, and I'm like, oh my God, it is February this week, which is just crazy. And so I hope your new years are off to a great start. I definitely encourage you to check in with yourself. How are you one month into the year? How are you feeling? Are you still feeling the momentum? Have you lost some momentum? What is it that is going through your mind? So I think it's important to just do a little self check in with yourself. As you will notice if you're watching video, I am slowly growing a jungle around me. I decided to put my Monstera in here. I think I might move it a little bit so you can see it more, but I just want to fill this room with plants and just have them all around me so we can have a very green, energized, exciting space. So I also want to get a light that kind of shines on the back, so that would be kind of cool. But if you're listening to audio, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but basically I put a bunch of plants in my office, which is super exciting. If you, my voice to me sounds a little bit different than usual. I feel a scratchiness in my throat. I feel I've been around folks that have been sick, and so I think it's finally found its way to me. But nonetheless, we're going to power through, but I do feel like my voice sounds a little bit deeper than usual. So that's awesome. Love that for me. But I'm very, very excited to be talking about today's topic. And this was actually my most listened to episode in 2023 was around overthinking and ways to stop overthinking. And in the last couple of weeks, I feel like this has been my theme for my life heightened more now than ever in my life or it's been more on my mind now than ever it ever has before and I just feel like I get myself stuck in these spirals and I overthink and I make myself anxious and I just overwhelm myself and so today we're going to talk about why you overthink and what you can do about it the truth is is we are all overthinkers in some capacity from you know, not knowing how to respond to that email that your manager sent you or not knowing what to say to maybe one of your friends who said something after you've internalized it. We all have different relationships with overthinking. For some of us, overthinking can really overwhelm our system. It takes over our subconscious. It is running in the background constantly. And it's not until, you know, we're at the end of the day, sitting on the couch exhausted that we bring awareness to our thoughts and we're like, wow, this has been playing all day in the background and I haven't even noticed. And it's beginning to recognize the effects that that's having on you, that that's having on your energy, that that's having on your nervous system. Because when we have these thoughts ruminating in the background, we are not in our rest and digest nervous system. We are being sent into into fight or flight and we don't even realize that it's happening. And so many of us, myself included, have been living in a state of fight or flight as long as I can remember. But when we've gotten so used to being and living in that state and it's all we know, it's hard to imagine that another reality is possible. And the reason I really strongly wanted to talk about overthinking is because I've really been noticing it heavy for me. And I'm curious if it's affecting you as well. And my truth is, is that it is. And that's why you clicked on this episode is because something in you was like, oh my gosh, I am so tired of overthinking. And I want you to know that I know it's exhausting. I know it's overwhelming. And I want us to talk about where that comes from and that it can and will get better over time. That is one of my main messages that I always like to portray to you guys is that it can get better. It can start to your quality of life can begin to increase again, but not until you do the hard work and you face these things that have affected you for as probably as long as you can remember. And I do just want to validate that there is some positives to being an overthinker. For example, this podcast is coming out tomorrow. 
I knew that I needed to record this episode and I was overthinking about it. So for me, overthinking sometimes gets my ass in gear. It gets me proactive in my work. It makes me work harder. It makes me, you know, very on top of things, which is great. But when you look at the flip side of that, of I have a very hard time relaxing, I have a hard time taking time for me, I have a hard time, you know, turning my brain off, that is when it becomes detrimental to your mental health and to your quality of life. And so the more that we can begin to work on it, we're able to just categorize our thoughts and allow those good motivating thoughts to continue while we can begin to interrupt some of those thoughts that might be overwhelming your ability to enjoy a good quality of life. I really wanted to just start off by saying that I am a chronic overthinker and I kind of just shared that but I, I looked down at my notes and I seen that and I'm like I just want you to know that you're not alone and that has been my I've been screaming that from the rooftops lately because in all these experiences that I know that I've had I know how alone that I have felt and I shame myself for thinking I'm the only one that's ever experienced that ever on the face of the earth and it's like overthinking is very common in fact it's very very common but it's not really a topic of conversation that just comes up when you're with your friends or you're talking with your family it's something that happens internally in our head and that inner dialogue is so powerful and it takes over our ability to be present and our ability to focus and our ability to think rationally, right? Because we're just so hyper-focused and on this go, 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 go spiral all the time. And I know for me, I overthink things so much to the point that it's like I build this little anxiety ball and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then I feel like I'm going to be sick. It's just like it overwhelms me. And I notice that my overthinking becomes worse when I'm stressed, when I'm in a place of unknown, when I'm worried, scared, it gets worse because my brain is just like, I need to do all these things and have all these thoughts and try to plan so that I can protect you. And that is really what overthinking is. It is how can I think so many steps into the future that I could not possibly miss seeing that something might go wrong? How can I become so analytical of everything going on in your life that you don't get hurt? How can I observe everything that everybody around me is doing so I can notice if there's a shift in energy? I can notice if there's a shift in behavior so I can protect myself. That is really what overthinking is and where it comes from. And so I want you to ask yourself, A, what is your relationship with overthinking? Because it doesn't affect all of us to the same degree, as I mentioned. For some of us, it's like we can overthink to the point of, okay, I need to get my to-do done today and I have these things to do. But for some of us, it's literally down to very personal, specific things that we're like, why in the F am I thinking about this? So A, ask yourself, what is my relationship with overthinking? Even since you've started listening to this podcast, I bet if you're an overthinker, there's a part of you that your brain has already taken you somewhere else. And you're like, I need to do that today. I need to do this today. Oh, that made me think of this, which made me think of that. And I think sometimes we categorize this and I don't want to bold statement this, but as ADHD, and I definitely have nuggets of ADHD, there's no question about it, but how much of it is actually just my nervous system being in fight or flight? Being so like, go, 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 I need to do something. I need to burn this energy. I don't want to think. I don't want to sit with my thoughts. I need to be 10 steps ahead. And so I'm just like, bah, 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 I'm everywhere. What does that sound like? sounds like ADHD, doesn't it? But what if it's just a trauma response to self-protect so we don't feel pain? And again, I don't want to lump these two things together, but I know for me, a lot of things that I have excused as just being ADHD, I'm like, well, no, what if it's just trauma stuck in my body? What if it's just the way my brain has wired itself to protect me based on my experiences? What if some of this is ADHD, but what if some of this is just a method of self-protection? It's just a what if that I kind of landed on this morning and I was like, ooh, that's an epiphany I never thought that I would have. And it's very permission giving because you're like, how, if we can begin to look at our experiences and start to connect the dots and start to you know, really look at how we behave and how we are and how we respond and we just take a second to validate that for ourselves, 
it is one of the most beautiful gifts we can give ourselves. Because if you've had a hard childhood, if you've had traumatic experiences, if you've had trauma to any regard, you're so worthy of owning for yourself that that affected you, that that has hurt you. And that overthinking is a byproduct of that. The definition of overthinking is as follows. To think too much about something, to put too much time into thinking about or analyzing something in a way that is more harmful than helpful. That is the definition of overthinking. Right in that definition, you can hear all that stood out to me was more harmful than harmful than helpful. Nine times out of 10, overthinking is trying to protect you from something, again, that has happened in the past. So if you have a similar experience that is happening, for example, the best example that I have is in my relationship because I have found myself overthinking up the yin yang because I'm scared because I don't wanna lose them. And so anytime that there's any slight shift in energy, my brain catastrophizes it and goes, that obviously means that he hates you. That obviously means that he's cheating on you. It's like the smallest of thing that could potentially remind me of something. My brain instantly goes to the worst case scenario. And luckily, I can bring these things up and be like, I'm triggered, can we talk about it? And we talk about it and it's fantastic and I'm so grateful. But I know that not everybody has that other side of the coin. And so how can you begin to validate that for yourself? When you notice those small triggers. So for example, here's one that I notice always bothers me. When somebody puts their phone face down, my brain goes, you don't want me to see what's on your phone. Red flag. And it's like, I have to pause myself and say, are you overthinking this? Is there a potential that you're overthinking this? And then it's like, okay, well in the past when this has happened, yes, that is true. Has this person ever given you those same reasonings to think that about them? No. Okay. So even just saying it's possible that I'm overthinking about this situation allows you to just hold a different duality. Because when you just blanket statement, throw something on, you begin to believe it and your body begins to respond as if it is happening. It begins to, res- if when you believe something and you think it's actually happening, your body's going to react as such. Your brain does not know the difference between what you are telling it and what is actually happening. And so if you are communicating in your conscious or subconscious mind, I'm being cheated on right now or insert thing here, your body's going to begin to freak out and have those automatic responses. Sorry if that sounded super gross, I needed to take a drink because my throat is super scratchy, but I know I hate the sound of like mouths or people eating or drinking or like those ASMRs with, ugh, anyways, I hate it, It drives me nuts. So if you heard that, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Oh, I just lost my train of thought. No worries, okay, I'm gonna go to the next thing, which I've really kind of landed on these already, but it's signs that you might be an overthinker. And if you are listening to this again, you've probably already self-identified and you probably already know this, but these are areas in which you might not know that you're an overthinker. And so the first one, shocker, perfectionist. Where do you think perfectionism comes from? It comes from wanting to have everything so perfect and and lined up and, and pretty and done. So A, you get validation. B, you don't let yourself down. You don't let other people down. You're trying to have control over something. When you look at perfectionism, although yes, it's a great thing to have in some ways, it's also a living stress response. Nobody talks about that side of it because when you're doing it for your boss or for a company or for your company or whatever, it's great and fantastic. But when you were in a state of fight or flight the whole time that you are Being a perfectionist, do you even realize that? Do have we even validated that that's where it comes from? It probably comes from your childhood need of needing everything to be predictable. No one talks about that side of it. 
And I'm not saying again that these things aren't great and benefit our life in some ways. But it's are you realizing that that's still affecting you and that your body is still having a response to that? And so that is the first sign. The sex one, oh my god, yeah, fantastic. The second one is constant self-criticism. That one's my best friend. Um, I probably spend 30% of my daily energy, give or take on the day, on just self-criticizing myself. You did that wrong. You should have done that better. Well, your hair looks stupid. Your outfit looks dumb. You're not in shape. You're out of shape. Blah, blah, blah. You blah, blah. And I just like, blah, 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 beat myself up, tear myself down, criticize everything. And it's just like, wow. It's so exhausting. And it is a huge indicator that you are an overthinker because you're so scared of how others are going to perceive you. You're so worried about how you will be internalized, how others will perceive you from the outside. And really asking yourselves, where did self-criticism come from? Maybe you had someone in your life that criticized you. Maybe you had to be a certain way all the time. Maybe you had family members that were super self-critical and so you grew up to believe that you needed to be self-critical. Everything stems from something. Whether you can pinpoint the experience or not, I don't care. It's not relevant. You don't need to remember it. But you need to validate that it came from something in your life. Whether it was something directly to you or something that you witnessed. And until we validate that for ourselves, we're never truly going to heal because we're just going to be looking at the present moment. And although, yes, we need to look at the present to be aware and to, you know, rewire things now, but we need to connect the dots on where the hell it came from for us. Because you also deserve to know and to validate that it came from something and it's not just something that you were born with or that is wrong with you. These are learned behaviors that happen through time and through experiences. And it is one of the most permission giving things that we can do is to validate that for ourselves. Okay, I'm gonna hammer off a couple more signs. Unable to relax. I'm sure we can all relate to that one. Constantly feeling worried or anxious. When we have, anxiety almost always comes from what we're thinking about. And we might not realize it, but anxiety and overthinking are best friends. They are BFFs. I was driving, we were, me and my partner out for a country drive yesterday. And I went to women's league basketball last night. And it was my first time really hitting the court since my college basketball experience outside of coaching. And I was getting myself in a tither. I could feel my heart rate increasing. I could feel myself getting overwhelmed. I could feel anxiety just like increasing, increasing, increasing. And I was overthinking and I was getting anxious. And it wasn't until I kind of said it out loud, like I'm anxious AF right now that I was able to be like, okay, you're catastrophizing about basketball. And then we talked about it and it calmed me down. But we need to realize that when we're constantly worried or anxious, it's because nine times out of 10, excuse me, what you're thinking about or the stories that you're telling yourself in your mind, because that is what your body is reading and feeding off of. Second guessing decisions, fixating on things out of your control and feeling mentally exhausted. Of course it's exhausting. If you are spending your day, A, trying to be physically present in the moment and doing your jobs and you know being parents and being caretakers or running a business, whatever, while also running a marathon in your head all day, every day, of course you're gonna be exhausted. It makes so much sense. But we don't realize those things. And then because we don't realize them and acknowledge them, guess what? It makes it worse because then we're overthinking, well, why am I like this? Why am I doing this? Why isn't it better? I'm trying to do everything externally. I just can't catch up. I feel like shit. And it's like, relax, which is the number one thing we can't do. Notice, right? I talked about it a little bit. Where does all this come from? By definition, what I was reading on a psychology blog 
said often begins as symptoms of early lived traumatic experiences, specifically invalidating abusive, neglectful conditions in childhood. Can also come from PTSD, anxiety, and substance use disorders. All of that can just like sit over here. What I hear from that is it came from your experiences. And whether you have PTSD, you have an ACE score that's through the roof, which is adverse childhood experiences, so basically traumas in your childhood. You've witnessed neglectful behavior. You've experienced neglectful behavior. Through all those, the same theme that I hear over and over again is you had something that affected you that is now causing fear of experiencing that again. And so you hyper think about everything to self-protect. Let's talk about some ways that you can take control of this. And again, I, as on par with my last episodes that I've done about anxiety and all these different things, I am so still heavily in an active state of overthinking all the time, which is why I wanted to talk about this. So again, I never want you to think that I am a pro, an expert, whatever. I am living this on a day-to-day basis, which is why I felt pulled to talk about it. I am, I found myself, even in recording this episode, I've noticed my subconscious some results and I have to pull it back and bring it back and bring it back and it takes time. And the first thing that we need to do to have control is to identify and acknowledge that we are overthinkers in the first place. Are you able to categorize am I an overthinker or am I just someone who thinks a lot there's a big difference are you someone who's very critical about yourself who is very perfectionistic who is needs to be on top of everything are your mind is your mind running you more than you are running it the first thing that we need to do is acknowledge that it is happening because like anything in the mental health world or in life without acknowledging it's just going to keep happening Because if there's no acknowledgement, there is no conscious thoughts around it. If there's no conscious thoughts around it, it's just going to be an automatic response. The second thing, pausing. Allow yourself to gain insight and perspective into what patterns emerge your overthinking. Pause and notice, okay, I'm thinking about this. Is this something I have control of? Is this something I don't have control of? Begin to notice what it is that feeds your overthinking. Is it a person? Is it an experience? Is it a place? What is it that trickles and starts that catastrophizing thought for you? The third one is reality check. This is one that I used to say to my clients all the time to ask themselves, and I've started to do as well. Do I have evidence to back up this thought? The same with the phone being face down. I'd be like, do I have evidence to back up that this means that I'm being cheated on? Yes, I've had experiences in the past. Do I have evidence right now to indicate that? No. Okay. Is it possible that I'm overthinking? Yes. Okay. It stops the wheelhouse. We need to just begin to, like an old DVD, just pause it. It can go on play again. It can keep going, but we need to pause it and interrupt it or else it's just going to keep going right? Number four, set limits and boundaries around what situations or people can trigger patterns of overthinking. If you know that being around a certain person overwhelms you, if you know doing certain things overwhelms you, right? We need to begin to recognize what our triggers are and what boundaries do we need to implement. This is where effective communication is key. Are you able to vocalize how you're feeling? Are you able to talk about these things in a safe way? This is where therapy is going to be your best friend. Have you processed things from your past? We need to begin to process so we can categorize them appropriately. It's like in the movie Inside Out where all of Riley's memories are stored. Our brains are all like that, but when everything's jumbled and we have trauma and we have all these things and they're scattered, Sometimes we need to bring them up again to reorganize them so we can interrupt the overthinking that is happening around that experience and to validate like, hey, I'm overthinking about an experience because I've had this when I was eight years old, when I was 15 years old, but that's not happening to present version of myself. 
But in order to set limits and boundaries, we need to begin to recognize where these things come from for us. And the last thing that I find very helpful is when you're overthinking, try to remove yourself from the situation and say, what advice would I give to my friend? If your friend came to you and said the exact same scenario that you were experiencing and overthinking about, what would you tell them? Because when we frame it in that way, it's normally a lot more rational. And you're not just acting out of emotion. You're not acting out of impulse. You're not acting out of fear, but you're actually rationalizing what you would say. And so that is the last thing that we can do to gain control. So identify and acknowledge, pausing, reality checking, setting limits and boundaries, and removing yourself from the equation. Does this make overthinking go away? No, it doesn't. But it can help and it can lessen the extent in which the thoughts go. If you find yourself ruminating for hours on hours on hours, maybe it starts to be like every hour I pause and I notice, and then I go back and then an hour goes by, it's just beginning to check in. So much of our mental health, there's a reason that I get kind of peed off when people dismiss mindfulness. Mindfulness to me is really just, are you able to pause and interrupt your thoughts and be in your body in a safe way for an extended period of time? If we can't do that, we will always constantly be living in a state of survival. If it is not safe to be in your body, which again, if it's not safe to be in your body, that deserves love and deserves care and you're deserving of getting the proper help because you deserve to feel safe in your amazing body. But until we're at a place where we can feel safe in our own consciousness and body, it's really gonna be, it's gonna dictate the quality of your life. And I've said that a couple times today, but it's so true. So I hope you know that these things don't happen overnight. It takes time, it takes work, it takes uncomfortability. And I would, I wish that I could tell you that it wasn't hard and challenging, but it is, and that's the truth. But at the same time, it is so worth it and it's possible. And I think that that is really what pushes me through hard times is knowing that it is possible. I just have to keep on it. So thank you guys so much for tuning into today's episode. I truly hope that you enjoyed. I hope you take some time today to just pause and notice the conversations that you're telling yourself. Are they constructive? Are they feeding your day? Are they bleeding your day? How are they affecting you? How are they making you feel? And know that you're worthy of shifting them and changing them and pausing them and challenging them to make more constructive thoughts for yourself. So thank you all so much. I look forward to chatting with you all on Thursday. Bye you guys.